Besides was, you're gonna wanna hang around for our lesson today. Oh. Welcome back to JW Kids Online. We are continuing our series of phase. Now, you guys might hear your parents or grandparents or any other adults say, ah, it's just a phase, it'll pass. Well, a phase is a phase. It happens and it'll pass in our lives. And you know, for me, I had lots of phases in my life too. But one in particular that I remember the most is I had a Tinkerbell phase. That's right, I said Tinkerbell. I had Tinkerbell everything. I had Tinkerbell bed sheets, pillowcases, comforters, Tinkerbell posters. I had Tinkerbell books that I didn't even read, but they had Tinkerbell on them, so I wanted them. I had Tinkerbell earrings, Tinkerbell necklaces, t-shirts, underwear, you name it. I had everything Tinkerbell. Hey guys, I always tried to add in my collection because the more Tinkerbell things I had, the happier I would be. I bet that you guys have something in your minds and in your hearts that you kind of become obsessed with, like I did with Tinkerbell, where you have all the things. Maybe it's sports, or maybe a video game, or a movie, or a character, or something like that. But guys, what that does is that makes us think about the things that we don't have rather than the things that we do have. And do you think God wants us to feel empty and on the inside, like we're, we're needing to have more stuff? No way, guys! God wants us to feel full and happy on the inside, and we can continue to find that fullness and happiness by having a relationship with God. And when we do that, he makes us feel content on the inside. And what that means is that ultimately we'll be happy with who we are, what we have, when we can, and where we are. Because it's a phase, but your now matters now. You guys, even when we try to hope and dream and wish for the future, we can remember that our now does matter now. Guys, it says in the Bible that we should rejoice and be glad with each and every day that God has given us because we want to make every moment count. We want to make every moment matter and give the glory to God in that. And you know what? We've been hearing about a guy named David in the Bible and he started out in phase one as a shepherd boy who was told that he was going to be a king. How crazy is that? But he had to wait to be king. And we're going to continue to learn what he learned in phase one, how that helped him in phase two. Let's check it out. All right, guys, we're hearing about David's phase two when he becomes a warrior. We're going to hear about it in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now there was a group called the Philistines, and there was a group of people called the Israelites. Now the Philistines and the Israelites were at war, each on opposite hills with a valley right in between them. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me together. Then a man named Goliath came out of the Philistine camp. This guy wasn't your average soldier. Goliath was over nine feet tall and was covered in armor that weighed 120 pounds. That's a lot of weight. He mocked everybody, even God, and challenged anyone to fight him. Come on, anyone fight me. Come at me, I will beat you. That's what he said, I bet. But all the Israelites, they freaked out. Aw, freak out! And ran away. One day, Jesse told his youngest son, David, to bring some food and check in on his older brothers who were fighting in the war. Now, David, he couldn't fight because he needed to tend to the sheep. He was a shepherd, and he was the baby of the family. Baby shark, do 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 baby shark, do 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 baby shark, do 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 baby shark, done. While David was bringing his brothers the food, he saw Goliath step out, challenging another fight. Again, everyone ran away. Oh, freak out! And some of them told David that whoever kills Goliath are going to get a huge reward. Money, 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 money! money. money. Oh, that a nice reward. Now David asked them, well, who is this Philistine guy anyway? He can't talk about the living God like that. One of David's brothers saw David talking to some of the soldiers, and he got very, very angry. He said, David, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be taking care of the sheep. Oh, I know how you are. You just want to watch the battle, don't you? But David was like, I did nothing wrong. I was just asking a question. Oh, I wonder, wonder, who who wrote the book of love? Maybe not that question, but close. 
Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and then the king sent for David. Now David told Saul, eh, don't worry about this giant. Don't worry about a thing. Every little thing gonna be all right. He says it's gonna be all right. He will go and fight the giant himself. King Saul thought that there was no possible way that David could fight this nine foot tall giant Goliath. No, 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 he was just a boy. He didn't have any war experience. He was a shepherd. But David proved everybody wrong. He told him that while he's in the field taking care of all the sheep, he's had to fight off lions and bears before to keep the sheep safe. Oh, I, I will survive. The God who helped defeat the lions and the bears will also help you defeat this giant. So King Saul let David fight. He gave him some armor, but David didn't really like it, so he just took it off. Shake it off, shake it off. Shake all that armor off. David chose five smooth stones, a shepherd's staff, and a sling as a weapon of his, weapon of his choice. When David started towards Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? Who let the dog out? Who, 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 who let the... But David said, you come to me with a sword and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. So beat, beat, it. It. beat, it. beat it, beat it, beat it. <laughs> Just beat it. As Goliath ran towards him, David grabbed a stone and shot it right at Goliath with his sling. It smacked Goliath right smack dab in the forehead and he fell face down to the ground. David had beat this giant that everyone was afraid of with a slingshot and a pebble rock thing. All because of the power of the Lord. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Don't stop believing in the Lord. He is powerful. God used what David learned in phase one to help prepare him for phase two. All right, guys, stick around to see what happens in phase two. You guys, David took down a nine foot tall giant when he was just a shepherd boy. Holy moly. But you know what? He could do all of this because he learned in the fields to not be afraid of danger, right? He was fighting off those lions and bears and trusted in God's ultimate power. And he did that exact same thing with Goliath. He even fought without armor because that's what he did protecting the sheep. He knew that God would protect him and that God would be with him always. Would you guys have thought that David in his phase one, being a shepherd boy, would have prepared him to be a warrior king? No way, Jose, I would have never thought that. Not in a million years, but God used everything that David learned in phase one to prepare him for phase two. Now, you know what, guys? David knew that when he couldn't do anything on his own, that God could help him to do that. And that's something that we should remember, too. And that is our bottom line. When you can't, he can. It's a phase. Your now matters now. You know what, guys? There's a lot of things that we might feel like we can't do, especially because we're too young when we can't do the things that we wish we could when we were older. Or maybe we feel like we can't share our faith. Or maybe we feel like we can't have a good attitude in the morning because it's easier to be crabby. But you know what, guys, we can remember that when we can't do something on our own, that God is there with us to help us, give us that power, just like he did for David fighting off Goliath. You guys, it's a phase. Your now matters now. Make every moment count and glorify God in those moments because you're going to learn how the phase you're in now will prepare you for the next phase in your life. All right, guys, let's put our hands out and let's pray. Oh, God, we just thank you for the constant reminder that you are always with us, that you're always fighting for us. God, help us to lean into your power and to remember that our now matters now. And God, when we feel like we can't do things, help us to trust in you so that you give us the strength to do exactly what we need to do. God, help us to live out like your son, Jesus, and help us to rejoice and be glad in every single day that you make. God, we just thank you and we love you so, so much. And in Jesus' name, we all said... Amen. All right, guys, if you want to continue to make your now matter now, one of the best ways you can do that is by digging into the Bible and getting to know who Jesus is. So we have a great way to get you guys started on that. You can check out our devotionals at the jacobswellchurch.church webpage underneath the JW Kids section. These are made specifically for you guys so you can live out love just like Jesus. Now remember, it's a phase, but your now matters now. Make every moment count, people. See you next time.
He gave him some armor, but David didn't like it. What were you doing? <laughs>